This is a very pretty case that Antonina Kalmakova shared with me. Um, I don't have any clinical information, unfortunately, but I don't think that matters in the overall scheme of things. Anyway, it's a short presentation, mainly for the residents, uh, to show you an unusual variant of cutaneous cyst. And at this scanning magnification, you can see a cystic cavity containing keratinous debris in the uh, in, in, in the in the, the uh, dermis. You have to excuse my printer making some noise in the background. There, there we are. So the cystic, there's a cystic cavity, and it's lined by stratified squamous epithelium. And at the top, there's a, a budding cyst, which looks very like a conventional epidermoid cyst. Um, and I think that's, that's fine for, for that part of the lesion. So we could regard this bit as typical epidermoid cyst. But then when we look at the rest of the lesion, the... Uh, the wall is very definitely not um, typical epidermoid cyst. It's composed of stratified squamous epithelium, uh, and um, in places the basaloid component predominates. And in fact, uh, here, here we see um, nice squamous eddies. Uh, which are often a feature of this particular lesion. I'll go back down with magnification again. Uh, and if we follow the cyst wall round, we can see there's a pretty heavy uh, lympho lymphohistiocytic infiltrate around the cyst wall. Uh, it's probably been ruptured at some point, and uh, there's... If we had enough levels, I'm sure we'd find a foreign body giant cell reaction. Uh, and in fact, uh, there's more of the cyst wall showing squamous eddies. Now, um, I marked this piece. It's not, it's not utterly convincing, but it's certainly suggestive. Um, here... Here we see a collection of cells with cleared cytoplasm and uh, slightly compressed hyperchromatic nuclei. And I think it would be reasonable, and, and there's some down there below with a thick cell membrane, and I think it would be reasonable to regard those as certainly suggestive of coilocytes. So let's go back down uh, another and just get an and see if we can find any other interesting features in this cyst. Uh, I'm sure many of you by, by now have made a diagnosis, at least I hope you have, um, because this is a, a lovely example of a Veruca cyst, uh, w which is an HPV associated cyst, although I don't think any particular um, papillomavirus subtype has been specifically um, identified as causing these these lesions. They're, they're, they are certainly uncommon and they can present just about anywhere in, in the uh, in the body uh, with no sex pre, pre, predilection. Some cases uh, have had PCR done and, and have identified a um, HPV infection, although I don't remember what particular subtype it was, but I don't think that there's a consistency uh, in, in the context of which virus may be associated with the Veruca cyst. So um, I'll leave you with that low power view uh, and um, if you memorize or get that image into your mind's eye then, then you'll have the perfect Veruca cyst. So thank you very much for your attention.